Hello, everyone. Welcome to the China Brief. We bring you the latest global media coverage on China's current affairs, economy, and society, as well as exclusive analysis. Our trustworthy, professional, and multi-perspective China reporting provides judgment and decision-making references for the world's elites. The China Brief is issued in multiple languages, including text, video, podcasts, and books, and is broadcasted 24/7 in the six-degree world. This is China Briefing. We bring you the latest content on China's current affairs, economy, and society from authoritative global media, as well as authoritative and exclusive analysis. If our content is of value to you, please subscribe to our content. The first time that the Russian-Ukrainian peace talks may be held in July. Peskov, Kremlin has no knowledge. According to sources quoted by the German Radio and Television Federation on June 26, representatives of diplomats from Western countries, as well as Brazil, India, and South Africa, attended a confidential meeting in Copenhagen on June 24. The report also said that formal negotiations on the settlement of the Ukrainian crisis could be held as early as July. Russian Presidential Press Secretary Dmitry Peskov responded on June 27 that the Kremlin had no knowledge of this and had not received any information about the so-called formal negotiations in July. Here is the China briefing. Sheffield Sherman on phone, follows up on Blinken. The State Department said Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman spoke by phone with China's ambassador to the United States on Tuesday to follow up on issues discussed during senior U.S. diplomat Anthony Blinken's visit to Beijing last week, Reuters reports. In the call with Chinese Ambassador Xie Feng, Sherman reiterated the importance of maintaining open lines of communication on all issues, the State Department said earlier in a statement. This was a substantive call. It was to follow up on the Secretary of State's visit, State Department spokesman Matthew Miller said at a regular news briefing. Secretary Blinken met with Chinese officials, including President Xi Jinping, but no agreement was reached on re-establishing a high-level defense dialogue. There are some conversations going on right now at the deputy cabinet level about following up on some of the issues that the Secretary of State discussed, Miller added. Miller said U.S. and Chinese officials have been discussing when Chinese Foreign Minister Qin Gang might visit Washington since Blinken's visit, but that visit has not yet been scheduled. Here is the China briefing. Washington's supposed consensus on China is an illusion. Foreign policy reports that Secretary of State John Blinken's recent visit to Beijing underscored diplomatic efforts to re-engage U.S.-China relations. Congressional Republicans have accused Blinken of being weak and of providing endorsement of the legitimacy of China's Communist Party, suggesting that U.S. expectations for U.S.-China relations are unclear. At present, there are ambivalent attitudes toward China in Washington that sometimes seem to suggest that a U.S.-China war is inevitable, with policy debates focused on how to punish China and prepare for it. The U.S. government recognizes that going into the 2024 election season, there is a narrow window of opportunity to redefine foreign policy and demonstrate how diplomacy advances U.S. interests. Despite this political climate, President Biden appears to understand that they must work with China, led by the Chinese Communist Party, for the long term. U.S. business leaders' concerns about China suggest that U.S. anti-China actions could harm economic interests, a countermeasure to limit de-risking, to limit decoupling. Biden wants to establish a stable framework to define and manage competition and to find opportunities for cooperation in areas where interests are aligned. However, there is an inherent contradiction in Washington's policy toward China. While the U.S. government has taken restrictive measures against China's high-end artificial intelligence, supercomputer chips and chip-making equipment, telling China that it does not intend to limit its growth is an insincere statement to China, which has led China to question the sincerity of the U.S. on the issue of limiting confrontation. Recently, China banned Chinese companies from buying chips from U.S. company Micron, possibly in response to U.S. efforts on related issues. 
Chinese Foreign Minister Qin Gang criticized Blinken for stopping interference in China's internal affairs, and foreign policy adviser Wang Yi told Blinken to reflect on his wrong views, implying that these views were the cause of tensions between the US and China. However, recent events may have some realist implications for China's ambitions. Recent polls showing rising skepticism and hostility toward China in Europe and much of Asia, as well as China's struggling economy, may help China recognize the gap between its ambitions and reality. A key question that China and the United States need to address is what is the ultimate goal? In order to build a relatively stable and constructive US-China relationship, they need to avoid unnecessary incidents and rhetoric with each other, clarify the terms of competition and their respective bottom lines, and change their respective approaches. Both sides must gradually rebuild trust and prove their sincerity through interactive actions. First, the atmosphere can be improved by reopening closed consulates, simplifying visa requirements, allowing more media access to both countries, promoting student exchanges, increasing flight routes, China releasing U.S. hostages banned from exit visas, rethinking recent data security restriction laws, and reducing air and maritime activities to Taiwan and the South China Sea. At the same time, hot-button issues such as China's role in the fentanyl trade, the resolution of the debt crisis for Africa and other low-income countries, and Ukraine should be addressed through cooperation. The two sides could also explore cooperation in areas such as artificial intelligence, trade, space debris and climate change. Bold leadership, political will and creative diplomacy are needed for achieving a new equilibrium. Political toxicity can be mitigated by reducing performative politics and Washington's support for Taipei. However, if this attempt fails, the vicious cycle will intensify and it may take a conflict like the Cuban Missile Crisis, or worse, to reach a new state of calm. Here is the China briefing. Russia's outsiders note Putin's sudden weakness. Foreign policy reports that the events of the past week in Russia will have a major impact not only on the country, but also on its neighbors and the international scene. The rebellion led by Wagner Group head Yevgeny Prigozhin exposed the weaknesses of the Russian regime and the highly personalized nature of power under President Vladimir Putin. While Prigozhin may not have intended to overthrow the regime, the ease with which his forces advanced toward Moscow may have surprised him and led him to seek an exit. This weakens Putin's power and authority. These events will also have an impact on Russia's neighbors, many of whom rely on the Putin regime for support and protection. The rebellion has exposed Russia's military and reliability weaknesses as an ally, leading these countries to reconsider their relationship with Russia. The cast of characters in these countries is slowly changing, and new leaders may be reconsidering their relationship with a weakened Putin. The impact of events in Russia will also be felt on the international stage. Putin's setback may be viewed with ambivalence in Beijing, as Chinese leader Xi Jinping has bet on Putin and does not want to see a dictator at the height of. Here is the China briefing. LVMH billionaire CEO Bernard Arnault arrives in China. Bloomberg reports that LVMH chief executive Bernard Arnault arrived in China with his daughter and the head of the Louis Vuitton brand. The visit comes as Beijing seeks to engage more closely with foreign executives. Arnault was spotted at a high-end shopping center in Beijing and is scheduled to meet with local teams in several cities. Beijing has been extending invitations to global business leaders to allay fears that it is becoming increasingly hostile to foreign capital. Stay up to date with the latest China-related news, analysis and policy briefings from around the world with China Briefing. Our team aggregates, synthesizes and summarizes the most important information from a variety of sources, including the media, think tanks, government agencies and industry experts. Our mission is to provide you with easy-to-access and highly valuable information that is tailored to your specific area of interest. We understand the importance of being up-to-date on the latest developments related to China and aim to make this information accessible to our readers.